This is the Good Girl Podcast. I am Cameo King, your host. There wasn't a space for women to be themselves in every facet of their lives. The Good Girl Podcast was created to offer that space, to have conversations with a gutted truth without restriction. Join us every week to unpack your own set of questions and confessions in this good and safe space. Welcome back or hey to the newcomers. Excited to continue these conversations that heal you, that free you. Um, Conversations that sometimes you have with folks behind closed doors but need to be had in an open space. So welcome to the Good Girl Podcast. Always want to remind you to follow us on social media. We're on TikTok. Uh, we're on Instagram, and we are on Facebook. We're on Twitter, too, but your girl ain't that active. So, eh, but you can join us on Twitter. <laughs> Maybe we can start the conversation there. Um, also, we are always accepting confessions. You can submit your confessions anonymously. Um, or if you want to be on the show and you want us to share your name, your blood type, where you live, include all that, too. It gives us a little bit more colorful conversation. Um, but we're going to hop right into this confession. And for this confession, I have none other than my homegirl, Danielle Moore. She's a licensed mental health therapist. She's also a psychiatric assessor in the Dallas, Texas, Texas area. What's Texas? What's Texas? Dallas, Texas area. Listen, that's how some of the Texas people say Texas. So you were doing good. Or you might have been an older person saying Texas, Texas you know, because they got Texas to take. They Listen, you never, you never know. But she's in Dallas. She's in Dallas. Um, and she also has two businesses, Uncouched Therapy, as well as a Refresh Wellness Center. So I'm always excited to have you not only as a friend, um, but as a expert who was called to be a mental health therapist on the good girl podcast Amen, saints it's good to be in the building again what up good cat girl podcast listeners we in the studio y'all i'm at the studio man we in the studio we don't friends that's usher usher baby i'm coming to see you boo i hope you like <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay anyway so um this topic is about something that has been i've been working through Mm. working so this is um i think i'm even about to get emotional but um something that i have been probably working through for the past maybe two years um and understanding that friendships evolve they change and sometimes they end um, I don't know if we really know if friendships end because who knows where we're going to be in the next five years, but really giving it space for friendships to end. And it really started this topic. The real reason friendships end started with something you said. I don't know if you remember it, but I'm, I'm going to repeat it. Tell uh, me what I had said. Da- friend. Danny be dropping diamonds and she don't even, re- she don't even remember, but this is what she said. So You said the truth is our friendships, if not all relationships, will eventually end because we have no use for one another anymore, especially when we bonded at a time. When she said that, I said, sheesh. Are you like I really want to? Are you that, that, are you serious? Because I, I I said that sounded very transactional mm-hmm. in relationships. So. I just want to confirm. This is something you said. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't something I made up. <laughs> I just want to say that real friends um, quote you and they write down what you say and they <laughs> record your conversations. Okay. Um, we, in t- we are intentional about writing down things that are said in our conversations just so that we can come here on this platform and share them. with. And I was talking about how, you know, as we grow and evolve, People in our lives change. It's the idea that people in your life exist for a reason, a season, and some for a lifetime. And when you're choosing to keep people around for a lifetime, sometimes it's because they are blood relatives, and sometimes it's because you have, you know, come into a relationship with them through marriage or or otherwise, right? Um, As you grow and evolve and depending on a different stage of your life, you connect with certain people. Um, the people that you connect with at this level of maturity is not going to be, or may not be the same people that you connect with, with a certain level of mature maturity five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, etc. So it's just like, you know, you make these friends in elementary, then you make friends in middle school. Then you make friends in high school, 
Then you make friends in college. You make friends in the workplace. You have other relationships that you've come into with regard to family and how you meet people there. Depending on the purpose of those relationships, people come and people go. People move away. People have things going on. People do whatever it is that is going on in their life, and you do whatever it is that is going on in your life. Depending on where your level of maturity is, you may not have the capacity to withstand the changes that are going on in someone else's life and vice versa. And so sometimes these relationships expire. Oftentimes they do. There are very few people who aren't blood related to you that end up traversing with you through life for decades, you know? And so when you do find relationships and friendships that have lasted over decades, well, you know, there's something to be said about that. And if it's a healthy relationship, because there are people who are in several relationships that are very toxic, um, that and they're toxic because they need to be dissolved, and people are trying to hold on to a relationship longer than it needs to be beyond its season, like the relationship has expired. I think um, that's something you've, uh, as, as a, you're, she's not my therapist, but, <laughs> but because we've had the privilege of being transparent with one another yeah. um, and the privilege of knowing how to talk to one another and also speak to um, who we are called to be, Danny has consistently told me cameo i know but she she speaks to baby cameo she <laughs> I do talk to baby, baby cameo cuz that's really who we're dealing with right we're we're not dealing with our present selves but we're dealing with who we were when we were younger and unhealed parts of ourselves essentially and i i think one time i said well i just why can't we just be friends you know that was that was listen baby cameo <laughs> will keep all of you okay she want to be friends with everybody she want to love everybody she want our relationship to last forever and forever one of the things that i say to her um to you know try to bring her into awareness is the problem that you're having is our relationship and I mean that in the sense of, like, because of me and Cameo's relationship and, and, and how God has connected us, we go from here, there, everywhere, and around the world, and then we're moving right along, right? And so we know how to laugh. We know how to cackle. We know how to cry. We know how to have hard conversations. We know how to scream at each other sometimes. We don't really do much screaming. Sometimes it's, it's just like, look. You know, um, you know, and that happens rarely, but we can have all of these ebbs and flows because of the type of relationship that we have. But people aren't healed enough to have those kind of ebbs and flows in their relationship. And depending on where they are at in their healing journey, where they are at in their level of um, communication skills, where their emotional intelligence is, people can't always handle that. And so sometimes people aren't ready to deal with their own behavior, their own stuff. And when people project their stuff onto you, you have to honor people's level of maturity. And Cameo, bless her heart, she is the queen of calling people higher. And it's a, like, that is what she's here to do. Um, and the thing that as a friend that I always try to love her into, you know, is friend. We also have to respect people's capacity to grow and evolve at their own pace. At their own pace. Because I could be trying to call you someplace Ooh, and God ain't God ain't said nothing. Or he might have said something that you been resistance and it ain't your job. It ain't. It ain't. To hold their hand through that. It's not. Or it isn't your job. To experience the turbulence of them, the abuse of them, yeah. the violence of them while they're in that resistance or that growth process. You don't have to subject yourself to that. And I think what's, what is actively happening in my life and some of my friendships um, is reflects what's happening in a lot of people's lives as they're growing. I think over these past three years with the pandemic forced enough people to really begin to look inward, mm -hmm. um, think about their values, mm -hmm. uh, stick to their values and grow very intentionally understanding that time is short, that ch things change very quickly. 
and they may have grown exponentially or even a little bit in certain places and the people that they were previously connected to haven't grown. Mm -hmm. And so then those relationships, as we reconnect, as the world is opening or you're beginning to do more things with your friends, you feel that shift. Mm -hmm. And there are things that you just naturally do not uh, accept. There are things that uh, don't sit well with you anymore. And you have this tension and that tension causes friction which causes consistent fallout and so your relationships and your friendships are in this interesting place friendships that you held near and dear to your heart friendships that you never imagined would end or you didn't understand this type of evolution in this friendship because even when I say end I do not know what's going to happen tomorrow I don't know if if you know me and certain friends are going to reconnect Um, but I do know what God has called me to do. I do know that it is not my job, uh, to, I don't even want to say force you to grow because I don't want to make it seem like it's their fault that they not growing. I don't, I don't want to create that, that space, but we grow at different paces Yes, we do in different areas. Yes. It could be areas that I'm not growing in or that I'm not aware of. They're like, cameo girl. Go sit in the corner somewhere. Come back to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, come back, come back to me when we can have a conversation about X. So I just I just want to be clear about that because I think oftentimes we have conversations and we're just pointing the finger saying it's the other person. And I, I very rarely think it's always somebody else, but it's two people that are causing this friction. They say iron sharpens iron. Oh, it's always a both and situation. Listen, listen. And so I'm trying to be highly, highly aware of that and what God is trying to teach me in this session. Um, or in this season. And so when you said what you said, it really stung because of my understanding of friendships. And also I think what media portrays, what social media portrays that you've been my friend for forever. Right. And the idea that even as I look at you and our relationship, I literally have prayed. I said, God, I don't want our relationship to end. I know some things may shift as we grow and as we're called to different things, but the fact that you have been a blessing to me, and um, I know I wouldn't be who I am today without you in so many areas. I'm about to cry, y'all. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to my eyes bigger. It's cathartic. <laughs> Let you, those tears flow. What you called me yesterday? Was it yesterday? <laughs> you went out. Oh, you was like, because somebody was crying on TV. You was like, you uncomfortable, Cameo? <laughs> 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 she was uncomfortable. It wasn't because with of the, the tears. scene because someone was crying, and I, I'm like, "Let them have their tears." I was not. We gonna let you have yours too. I was not. You don't have to be a gangster at all times. I was not. Killer. I was not. <laughs> I was not not crying because or I wasn't. Unco- anyway, anyway, let's get bring back focus. I do cry sometimes by myself in a corner in my closet. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think. It made me shift how I looked at friendships. And I want the goal in this conversation is for people to begin to really think about what's happening in their friendships and to let them know that it is, in fact, okay. And the real reason friendships end. And I think it's because of growth, but I also think it's because of values um, that. I really value integrity because I, I, I started the conversation with or in the middle of the conversation with the pandemic and just everything that is happening in the world has allowed a large portion of us to really reflect about what we want out of life, what our values are, and really stick to those things and really go after those things. And so when the closer you get to your values and the more sure you get about your values, your direction in life, what you accept, what you say yes to, what you say no to, all of that changes. Your no's become a lot harder, right? It's not a ma- it's no. And your yes become a lot more assured. When, when I make the statement, the real reason, the real reason why your friendships in, I'm mm-hmm. also including relationships too. And I do believe it's because of a misalignment of values. Absolutely. Um, I heard, I think his name is Quest. Um, he does like a marriage series. And he, uh, one time he talked about when you are looking to be married and you're with someone and you're considering them, you know, at the top of the list is values. Mm-hmm. Like your values have to align. If they do not, you will most likely, if not all the time, 
find yourself ending that relationship or ending that marriage. And um, it kind of stuck with me because I really didn't understand it at the time. But now as I am evolving, Mm -hmm. I understand that all of my decisions are made out of my core values, Mm -hmm. whether I know it or not. And the question I think I asked you yesterday was, do we really know what our core values are? Um, And so are we really able to, to engage with someone on that level when we meet them, whether they're friends with whomever, are we really able to have that conversation of do our values match? Right. Even when we think of, cause listen, you know, as a believer, he got to be Christian. Right. And you, you can be a, you can be another believer, but baby, if your integrity ain't intact, if you are not authentic, who are, who, who are you? Who are you? If your representative is showing up in this conversation in this relationship, I can't trust what you say your core values are because you met, you said this one time you said, if I'm dating someone, I don't really care about what he wants because I don't want to be in a space where I start conforming to and shaping what I'm doing to what he wants. Even if it doesn't align with what my core values are, baby, that's it. You have to be, unapologetically authentic. You really have to be tapped into this is me and it's non-negotiable, right? And that makes some people uncomfortable because they don't know how to show up as themselves and they're not going to advocate. They don't, they're not going to advocate for being who they are in the room. They're going to conform to whatever the expectations are. And and what happens is you do get in these relationships. Oh, absolutely. Right. And I'm talking about like romantic relationships, Mm -hmm. but you can apply this to long-term friendships Mm -hmm. and you got in these relationships with mismatched, misaligned values. Mm -hmm. And what happens is I, I connected to, or I fell in love with somebody that wasn't you Mm -hmm. and the real you will show up. Yes, it will. One way or another. It's going to seep out your pores. It's going to show up in the decisions you make. It's going to show up in how you treat me and how you treat other people. And we're going to end up in ending our friendship or ending our relationship because we were not highly aware of our values. And this is why relationships end or, and or evolve and shift. You know, I like to say that when people don't know who they are and they do not show up as their authentic selves, it drastically increases the likelihood that you are going to mishandle and mismanage the people around you. That is what I always say. And so I can't expect for you to do right by me because you ain't doing right by yourself. You have to do right by you first. I don't care what society and culture has told you, has indoctrinated you with. You have to get to the core of who you are because anything else that you try to layer on top of that, it's unsustainable. You out here with a dollar store curtain rod trying to put some designer drapes, okay, on this dollar store curtain rod with this little metal hook on the end knowing you need an entire, don't do that. Stop it. Your your curtain rod going to be on the ground behind the couch. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what it's like when you show up in these spaces and you're not your authentic self. It is not sustainable. You won't be able to hold up the world that you created with your representative. And guess what? Can't nobody beat you being you. It's disrespectful to God to want to be somebody else. Come on. It's disrespectful to God and yourself to try to show up as somebody else. There is something about you that is you that can't nobody do or be, and the world needs that. If you want to show up in this world and be somebody else, you might as well not be here. God already created that person. I'm going to be the next Danielle Moore. (laughs) Listen. People used, ask, people used to ask me all the time, you're going to be the next Oprah? No, Oprah, Oprah was Oprah. For Oprah Oprah's, was Oprah. For Oprah's generation. Listen, I'm one of one. The only one. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I'm emphasizing, one, that do not think it's strange as you are evolving that your friendships are 
ending, shifting, changing, evolving. And I want to be clear too, you can still desire that friendship. You can still desire that relationship. You can still have boundaries and still want for more, but understand that your boundaries are important for you and for you to become and maintain this person that you're called to be. And it's not an easy just, oh, I'm cutting them off. It's, it's, not, it's not. Like, I, I love my friends deeply. It grieves my heart, the fact that I cannot connect with them in the same way. Mm-hmm. So um, I will also want you to pay attention to the turbulence, right? Mm-hmm. If you find yourself in a turbulent situation with someone consistently, you want to be asking yourself why and how, right? You want to be asking yourself, you know, am I bumping heads with this person because I have evolved or they have evolved and now, you know, they're used to this other version of me and they can't really interact with me with the current version. You know what I mean? Like you can try to not update your iPhone for how many versions (laughs) and it's going to irk and jerk on you, right? There's going to be some turbulence, Uh right? Um, You really have to have good boundaries with people and respect when their boundaries change and people don't like when your boundaries change, especially if they benefited from you having a lack of boundaries or laxed boundaries. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if people benefited from the old version of you, sometimes that's very, very hard for them and they blame shame and attack you and try to manipulate you into becoming a lesser version of yourself. And that creates turbulence and it can become very toxic. And some people succumb to that. The conflict is too much for them because a lot of people can be conflict avoidant. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you want to, you know, your mental health is paramount. And you really do have to put yourself first. And if you are in a situation where someone is not willing to accept the, the version of you, the current version of you, you have to limit their access to you or you have to dissolve the relationship or you will not be well. It, it was it was something I just shared on Instagram. And I'm again, I'm going to paraphrase. But what happens when you share your truth? Will they still stay? I saw that. Will they still stay? And when, and it's not just necessarily your truth of your past, but it's your truth in who you are. Mm-hmm. When I show you who I truly am, good, not so good, and different, trauma filled, will you stay? And that's not necessarily to um, say that you aren't a good person. If you can't say, because maybe you can't handle that part of me. Maybe you, you can't. You don't have the capacity, and that's okay. It is. But the point is, you have to know. And you have to show up to be your authentic self because I think that also connects back to fear and trauma because I am afraid to show you who I truly am because I have a fear of abandonment because Mm -hmm. of some issues from back in the day. And so either I don't show you who I truly am or when I do, you're you're shocked and surprised and you do back away. Or you have toxic relationship and communication skills and you are of the belief that if a relationship changes or dissolves, you have to demonize the other person. Girl, and that's a that's there a, has to be beef. That's that's a whole nut listen, and, and and let's be clear. I know you're saying it has to be beef and you demonize the other person, but you kind of check me on that too. Like we don't have a real conversation because you flipped it though. You say, Cameo, you don't know how to end relationships. Okay. This going back to baby cameo, wanting to be friends with everyone. The only way that you consider ending a relationship is when there is beef. Mm-hmm. Like in serious beef. Like y'all had to be beefing for a year. She like she or would have to not drown. Like, like it would have to be something in order for me to consider not thinking about my values, mm-hmm. not thinking about. Mm, yeah. Friend was over here only ending, only considering. Considering. Only considering ending relationships if there was beef. And I'm like, no, ma'am. Sis still, no, ma'am. Sis still struggling a little bit. She's still struggling, <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm that's what you got to help your sister out, did she right? she just do the uppercut like she was going to punch you? <laughs> no, oh. I did the, oh. the arm and arm. Got to help sister out. No, okay. the arm okay. and arm. Okay. You okay. got to arm and arm, like. 
reach under the arm. Okay, and I got it. Your arm in my arm. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> See, killer. That's this. This is the exact point that I'm making. She think it gotta be some beef, right? She think you gotta you gotta bust somebody up. Huh. No, this is not the case. You know, all relationships. We really do have a this toxic narrative in society where there has to be all on beef. You will have people be fake, catty, nasty, backhanded, you know, um, passive aggressive back and forth with each other because they all belong to the same organization and this, that, and the other. And it's just like, you know what? The way that you show up as yourself, I respect that, but it don't align with my spirit and my core values. And I just need to, I need to change you know, the the amount of access that you have to me or the amount of spaces that I'm in with you, Mm -hmm. you know, because I need to be able to be my 100% self and I only want to be around those type of people. And so there's a Bible verse that say, if you go into somebody's house and they don't receive you, baby, baby, (laughs) knock the dust off of your feet and roll out. And and when you say they don't receive, I think you... You, you is the operative word here in this conversation. Who Mm. are you? Are are you you? your authentic self? So they can or cannot receive you because the thing about it is we do want to be affirmed. We Mm -hmm. do want to be accepted wherever we go and we seek that. And that is just a natural part of who we are. That's a part of the human condition to be accepted, to be affirmed in community with people. And our access to that oftentimes is quelling parts of who we are. Mm -hmm. It's quieting. It is shifting. It is changing. So we can get that fundamental need met. But you really, that's the trick of the enemy. You really aren't getting that need met. Mm -hmm. Because who you're called to be is really what, that is where your freedom, that is where your peace, that is where your joy comes. And you're getting like a piece of this big old pie because you're showing up as a half version of Cameo just because you're accepted in this place and it feels Mm -hmm. good temporarily but baby on the other side i'm telling you there are people there who will accept you for who you are and love you properly again not demonizing those other group of people Mm -hmm. they just they're just not for you and sometimes we have to step back and look at the systems that set us up for failure you know and sometimes organized organizations like churches you know, you're being browbeat into, you know, whatever the culture is in that particular church or organization. And if you don't fit into that, then you are demonized. Then you are blame, shamed, and attacked. Then you are, I mean, don't get me hyped. Yeah, you, hyped. You, blame, you blame, shamed, and attacked just for being a single pe- person in the church. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> name I- you know, and so <laughs> there may be certain behaviors or things that you, like, try to do to dumb yourself down or... You you know, just to be a part of because you don't want to offend anyone yep. or you want to be accepted or you think this is the trick. You think that you have to alter yourself temporarily to get them to get to know you because at your core, baby cameo and baby Danny is saying, I, I'm a lover. I love everybody and I'm a good friend to have and I'm compassionate and I'm resourceful and I, I would be so like if they get to know me they're gonna know how great I am there are some people who are committed to being in conflict with you mm-hmm. there are some people who are projecting their own stuff onto you and it is important and imperative that you know who you are so that you can clearly see when somebody is doing that. If you don't know who you are, somebody treats you a certain way. You think that it is, it is just because of you. And so then you are internalizing everything that they do to you. What's wrong with me? And then you're trying to change and dumb yourself down to fit into this space. And it's just like, This person does not like you. And I think what is difficult for people to understand in this process, because we're talking about, again, why friendships end, why relationships end, about misaligned values, and uh, they are misaligned because you are not showing up authentically as yourself. And then when you do, it's a shock to some people. It may even be a shock to yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And so people don't know how to receive you and how to take you, but you really begin to fully walk and who you're called to be in the places that will cultivate you, that will affirm you, that will even push you further into your purpose. Uh, Because, going a different direction, because when you do not show up authentically, authentically and in your authenticity, 
other people in places cannot respond. Nope. They can, they will not recognize you. Mm-mm. And so literally there is this Bible verse. I can't remember it, but it talks about how creation is waiting. Yeah. Words out of my it's, it's like, I feel like it's, it's like at a, at a, a, a start line where they're just mm-hmm. waiting for the authentic camera to show up. So boom, this resource can happen or boom, yeah. this relationship can happen or boom, you can experience this level of freedom. Yes. Right. Uh, because I also want to make it a point that freedom and success, <laughs> that may not necessarily align. Because you can be authentically yourself and you will be well mentally, but society may not receive you as such. But that's a whole nother conversation. Um, but there are, you know, it's like creation is waiting, mm-hmm. is waiting for you to show up authentically as yourself. And I, And what is happening right now is as you are becoming this person, things are falling away that are not meant for you to go to this next space. And I think we hear it a lot in church, but we hear it in a way where it's demonized, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes you just got to leave people where they at or um, this idea of haters. And, and just in mm-hmm. just this space, I get it. But one, it's not that easy because it's typically people you love, you are in relationship with um, that have been there for you. And some of your darkest times who have encouraged you. So it's not as easy just to say, I'm going to leave you behind. It mm-hmm. pains you to leave you behind, but understand that your calling is greater and they have a calling too. Yeah. And so I want to ensure that we're painting this clear picture that the authentic you is going to require some things to fall off. And that's probably what's happening right now as your relationships are shifting, as things are changing in your life, um, as you are becoming the best version of you. One thing I want to touch on, though, is values, right? I know we talked about misaligned values and how that's at the core of this conversation. And I asked you up top, do we really know what we value? And I can say, Danny, I can say I value education, but that shows up differently. Absolutely. Me valuing education could be me going back to school, right? You valuing education could be you looking at a YouTube video. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or you may value the process of education or someone being educated, or somebody just having letters behind their name, you know, how does that show up for you? Do you, are you in a space where, you know, you participate in social stratification based on um, academic credentials? You know, are you, do you weaponize? Girl. You know, do, you, do you value education in a way to where you weaponize it? And you can lay that across the board with anything, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's like if you, like you were saying yesterday, like if I say that I value education, like, you know, I mean, like, you know, I went, I researched, I got the credentials, I'm well studied. Study to show thyself approved is what the words say. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you value education. You value getting education, you might value somebody just having education, but not value, but it may not be, you know, a value for yourself where you want to acquire education via academia. You might be like, oh, I'm, I value it in a way to where I want to learn a trade or I want to do this or I, I just, you know, I'm kind of going with the flow. I mean, it just, you know, yeah. how, how we value something and how we understand it may show up differently. So then your values are misaligned there. Relation, listen, y'all, relationships. <laughs> relationships and how we exist. And, and I, I think I heard someone say this before. I think we need a training or it needs to be harder to get into a marriage than it is to get out of a marriage. Meaning you're, like, you're taking these courses, you really understand, you unpack. And I think some of this is talked about in premarital counseling. Absolutely. Um, but if you don't have a good premarital counselor, then you think that you are aligned. You can have an excellent premarital counselor, but as we said, in that last session if you aren't in there telling the truth huh (laughs) if you don't know yourself if you don't know yourself because some people like you you sincere you think you're telling the truth but you're not that's not what you really like that's not what you really want Mm -hmm. that's not what you really desire or sometimes your your ignorance your lack of experience 
Sometimes you think you want something, and when you get there, you're just like, oh, no, this ain't this ain't what I want. I don't want them kids. I don't want them kids. <laughs> <laughs> what, what she said, this would never have been a part of my life. You know, uh, that was someone's confession. You know, when sometimes when you have certain experiences, you don't know until you have the experience. You don't know until you have certain experience, and then guess what? Your values change. Listen. And people need to be able to respect themselves when their values change and other people's response to their values changing. Sometimes people can't handle your value shift. And if they can't handle your value shift, that's okay. It is okay for the nature of the relationship to change in the way that it needs to change so that you both can show up and be the highest and best expression of yourself um, and the people with the people, places and things that you're supposed to be them in. Getting back to what we were talking about. <laughs> I went core completely. Values. Oh, sorry, no, core no, values. Because it's no, that is still connected to your core values. It's all really about your experiences and you being able to articulate who you are, what you need from other people, and how you can respond to other people's expectations of you. If other people's expectations of you do not align with your core values, you're going to have to be able to articulate with them, hey, I can't show up for you in this way. Recently, Tab- Tabitha Brown's show uh. got pulled from a prime time spot because she is non-compromising and showing up as who she is. And and she just she got on the internet and just said, listen, if you don't like this version of tab, don't work with me, okay? <laughs> if you don't like, you know, the tab that love Jesus, the, the, the that throwed out tab, the tab that's going, you know, the, the 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 mother version of tab, the the vegan version of tab, don't work with me, okay? And and I think I know the reason why you put that hard stop there. Because if I tell you how much work it is taking, it has taken for me to be here. To, to unlearn, be Listen, to unlearn, undo, unbecome. All of this foolishness. And be myself. Why would I take a step back? Why? And it's for so some, freeing. For some money? For some money. The freedom, the, the freedom of authenticity is like none other because nobody can take that away from you and you don't have to remember how to show up in all of these different spaces when you're showing up as you huh you you just exist and i think it's a a, and i think about people who are in relationships going back to why friendships and who have showed up as an inauthentic version of themselves and they're trying to keep this charade on because they know or they believe that it pleases their mate it pleases whomever they're in a relationship with it pleases the organization but baby that's bondage it is bondage but i I do want to say something that I meant to reference earlier. And I think, too, what, you're, uh, what, what you are highlighting is that this process, again, to finding the relationships that we are supposed to be in, that we are supposed to be connected to, do, connected to mm-hmm. it is not easy. But it is a process. Yeah. And we have to respect where people are, wherever they are. And we also have to be extremely self-aware and knowing when to, to pull back. And I also think a part of that is is trusting God that who you are meant to be with romantic and friendships, that they will be there when they're supposed to be there. I posted something that love will find you when it's time. I know I was thinking about romantic relationships, but even your community will find you when it's time when you are your authentic self because even if you show up as your inauthentic self in your right community they gonna look at you sideways and they are not going to accept you as they would when you were your authentic self and I think it's especially difficult and I want to juxtapose this to where we are now for us to learn this behavior because everything in society tells us to stick with people, stay with people, ride or die. Girl, like, I'm not trying. I'm not dying. Right. Right. Like the, it, I'm it living. Tells, it tells, ride and get out. It tells us. <laughs> Matter of fact, I ain't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not riding. Not in that way, but I'm not riding. I'm it, just. I mean, it tells us, even when I think I was, I saw some panel and they were talking about friendships and relationships. And I think three, it was four people possibly on that panel. And only one person talked about, like, I thought it was going to be me and my friends in my jet 
me and my six friends, she said, right now, I'd be like, Jesus, where my friends at? Where my friends? That, yeah, and the I other that. some of the other panelists was like, no, I still got the same people I roll with when I was in high school, and I'm like, how sway? How? How? Because it's I mean, you, it, you it, if y'all aren't growing or evolving, or if y'all are just you know kicking it. I mean, I, let me be clear. I do have some friends, you know, from high school and from childhood. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And the nature of our relationships, you know, are what they are. But you said something, you know, about trusting God. And I think what's what's secondary to that is being able to trust ourselves. Mm-hmm. And we've had conversations about this where because we've had adverse experiences with relationships before, whether they've been platonic or romantic, sometimes we don't trust ourselves, particularly when someone has undermined our discernment and told us that, they had the capacity to be who we needed them to be because they weren't showing up as their authentic self. So this is a reminder for you, as with all of our conversations, that we unearth some things that may have been sitting in your soul or something that you've been experiencing, having an honest conversation about what is really happening so we can get to the heart of that. And so you can move forward and, again, be who you are called to be. All of your areas of growth only come by way of honesty, only come by way of confession. That is the only way you will be healed if you are if you are honest with yourself. I say this every time and I will beat this drum. I will stand on, I will die on this hill. Mm -hmm. You have to be honest with your, in every way with yourself in order to get to the next level. It's something as simple as what you want to eat for dinner. You got to be honest with yourself, right? Or the fact that you really love chocolate ice cream. If you're trying to cut back on your sugar, or the fact that if you really, I'm talking to myself, you really love sweet potato pie <laughs> and oatmeal cream pies and you're trying to cut back on your sugar, you got to be honest with yourself in order to start somewhere. Yeah. So as we talk about values and why friendships and relationships are ending and are changing, again, it starts with you. You got to be honest. You got to tell yourself the truth about who you are, about what you desire, about what you want, and then you can begin to show up authentically as you, and then you can begin to actually tell people, this is what I desire in my relationship. Mm -hmm. And then they can respond to you if they can or cannot meet that desire. And then you even have to test it (laughs) to see if it's true. Because I can tell you, I can tell you, yeah, I want to be a mama. But deep down inside, F them kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because. So, uh, because I love you so much, I'm going to tell you I want kids. Instead of being honest, like, I've never had the desire, deep desire to have kids. I'm afraid to have kids because of X, Y, and Z. I do love you deeply. I do. But can we really do this? Can our relationship withstand that? Relationships that are in a good place have a hard time withstanding kids. I mean, just the physical, you ha- just the just what it does to a woman physically to grow a human and then have that human nurturing from her body and her energy and seeing to that human, even if she has help, baby, that's a lot. That's a lot mentally, emotionally, physiologically. It's a lot. It changes you as a person. It changes you mentally, emotionally, and physically. It literally does. You become a completely different person than the person they was when you married them, right? Your perspective changes on everything. And sometimes people can't handle that. Like I said, at the core of all this is being truthful to yourself first. Yeah. Then you can be truthful with the world. As always, we are accepting confessions. You can send them anonymously or you can include your name, where you're from, if you want to be a guest on your show. Um, I hope this was good to your soul and to your spirit. I hope you were freed uh, as you listened to the Good Girl Podcast. I am Cameo King, your host. Thank you for listening to the Good Girl Podcast.